So now that we have processed all the drums, I like to do something that's called parallel processing. With parallel processing, we can actually enhance the sound even more and more drastically without losing the much of the original sound. So it's, it's major improvements, but minor, if that even makes sense. So let me show you how I do it. So all these drums that you see here, I've routed it to bus three and four, which comes down here on the bottom. So that's my drum group. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna create a new auxiliary track. And I'm gonna call this parallel kick low and solo save it bus it to the drums which were on three and four as we saw before and then use a available bus which in this case is 13 and 14 as the input so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna insert the comp G from overload on here so with the comp G loaded I want to put it at about a ratio 6.1 which the original British unit can do. It has fixed settings, so this is beautiful for it. And in this case, I don't want to engage the side chain, but I will show you when I do the drum group processing with the COMG, why I want to use it on there. It has a parallel function, but the reason I'm not using it on this particular parallel chain is that I want to EQ it afterwards. If we were to insert it on the actual kick drum, it would change the sound too much by adding another EQ to it. I'll show you the difference. So I set the ratio to about 6.1. I want to have a fairly slow attack time, so I'm going to put it all the way to 30. And my release time, I want to have it as fast as possible. So really what's going to happen is it's going to snatch up the sustain of the signal and release really quick. So we can boost that up and make the kick really solid and then EQ it afterwards. So I want to have it hit about um, maybe 6 to 7 dB of gain reduction. So let's see how it's interacting. So let's put the bus 13 and 14 on here and put it to Unity Gain. And let me copy it over to the duplicate kick as well. And let's press play and see what it does. So as you could hear when I moved the threshold more radically that the attack became more defined but the kick and overall became a bit more solid. So I, wanted, I don't want to go that hard with the threshold. So I'm moving back the threshold a little bit because I don't want to go that drastic with it. Let's play and see where we're sitting now with the, um, with the gain reduction on the comb G. It's about right. The kick is uh, loud. So let's bring this down a little bit. And let's insert overload EQ 495. I like this as a parallel because we can, we can boost the low end in a very musical way. So I love to set this to 100 hertz and give it quite a severe boost. And let me play it back so you can hear what it did. As you can hear, the kick now is really solid. Nice beefy low end. And I find it a little bit too attacky, so I'm gonna remove a little bit of 10 kilohertz, which is already set here on the plugin. So let's move that back by two to 40 dB. Let's see how it sounds with four removed. can actually go more like minus six. So let's play the kicks back without the parallel processing. So let's mute it. This is before the parallel processing. And this is with the parallel processing that we just apply to it. As you can hear, it's much, much more defined. So we're going to do the same parallel processing 
to all the claps and the snares over here. So let's create a new auxiliary track for that. So we'll save it again. So we're going to call it parallel clap low. Same with the kick drums. We see that the drums are all bus to bus three and four. So let's do the same thing here. And find an available bus as input. Bus 15 and 16. I always like to color code my drums for the fact that I can easily see what is what. So that's why I always do the color coding. Let's bring this one back to, to about the same level as the rest of the snare claps and snares. And let's insert another copy of the Overloud Comp G on this one. So we're going to use the same settings pretty much. Slowest attack, fastest release, and again about 6 to 1 ratio of compression. So let's insert the bus 15-16 on here. So to Unity Gain. We copy them over to all descents on all the claps and snares. Let's move down the threshold all the way and see how much gain reduction we're getting. It's quite a bit, so I'm going to move it back. It's about right. And let's add again. So I inserted the EQ495 after the G-Comp. And what I want to do with this one is add a little bit of low end and a little bit of high end to it. So let's see how it sounds with 1.4 kilohertz engaged and a fairly broad Q. And I just want to boost it slightly. So maybe plus 2 dB. Without it. And again with the EQ engaged on it. As you can hear it brings it much more forward. Let's see what happens if we bring in a little bit of a hundred. And without it. And with the EQ and parallel engaged again. As you can hear, it lifted the clap more in the mid range, but with the 100 Hz boost, it gave it that nice little body to it with some extra weight, which we wouldn't have with just boosting the mid range because it would become a little bit too light. So, having then our kicks parallel and our snares parallel, I also love to parallel compress the entire drum group. So what we're going to do is the same thing. We're going to create a new auxiliary track. And I'm going to call this comp g return. Send it to bus 3 and 4, which are our drums. And find an available bus for input, which is 17 and 18. And we're going to put it on all the drums except for the parallels. Put it to Unity Gain and let me copy these over. Let's solo all the drums and let's insert the EQ84 from Overload on here. So what we're going to do here is with the EQ inserted, I want to roll off as much low emits as possible. So let's dial this all the way to 360 Hz and take the bypass off. And then I want to boost quite a bit of the high end. So I'm going to dial this to say in between 4.8 and 7.2. We're going to engage it. I like a broad Q setting for this. So what this will do is it will boost our mid highs quite a bit for more definition and punch for the claps, the snares, more brightness and shimmer for the hi-hats. But we're going to send that into the comp G. So the comp G is going to overly react to our EQ curve that we're pushing into it. So let's put this to about 
midway, about 8 dB. And let's insert the COMG after this. So we're going to use pretty much similar settings. So about 6 or 5 to 1 ratio, slowest attack, fastest release. And let's play it back and see how much gain reduction we're getting. So we can move this up quite a bit because I want to have it hit harder. As you can hear, the drums came a lot more forward and more present in the entire mix. This will benefit with the clarity. So I'm going to play it back without the parallel drum group. And with the parallel drum group engaged. As you can hear, the drums are much more aggressive using the parallel drum group. So having treated all our drums, I'm also always going to put a little bit of compression on the actual drum group. So let's move down to our drum group. And I'm going to insert another copy of the Overload Comg on here. And this is more like to tame the peaks a little bit. So we're going to keep it at a very modest ratio of 2.1, slowest attack. And we're going to put the release on auto so that automatically the compressor figures out the curve of the audio coming in so that we don't get too much of a pumping effect and what I like to do is I like to give the low end of the drums more free roam so that's when we're going to engage the sidechain filter over here and I will usually like to put it to about 250 Hertz and I'm going to play you the drums compressed with the sidechain engaged and without so you can hear the difference so let's play this back with it engaged Quite a bit too much of compression for my taste, so I'm going to move the threshold up a little bit. So it will compress a little less hard. That's about right. So let's listen to it with the high pass filter engaged, and then I'll play it without the high pass filter engaged. And without it engaged. And again, with the high pass filter engaged to about 250 hertz. Now, as you can hear, with the high pass filter engaged, that our kick is much more punchier and still very bottom heavy. With the high pass filter not engaged, we could hear that the compressor starts reacting really, really hard on the low end, and we don't want to compact our kick drum that much. And this is pretty much how I treat my drums at all times.